friends welcome to biology made in g we, we in the previous video we have discussed the general characters of bryophytes now in this video we will discuss the characteristics of uh, liver worts liver worts liver worts are coming under the main class that is hepaticopsida hepaticopsida now from this word you can know what is a hepatitis means liver that is why they are known as liver words because this means a liver that is why they are known as liver words and usually these liver words they grow in moist shady damp or you can call swampy swampy uh, habitats habitats and also some grow on banks up banks up streams and some grow in a deep forest but whatever may be the condition it should be moist shady condition that means say water should be available so that they can complete their life cycle because they are known as amphibians now the uh the main plant body the main plant body is always uh, thalloid thalloid means it is thallus like thallus like means uh, no root stem no root stem and leaf because their thalloid structure their prostrate you can call they are uh, prostrate prostrate and what type of prostrate they are dorsi ventrally prostrate dorsi ventrally they are prostrate that means they are prostrate like they are prostrate like this on the surface of the ground and dorsi ventrally that means we can see one ventral side lower side and on the upper side or dorsal side not like this that is this is lateral compression but this is upper side and lower side they are dorsi ventral differential that means this is the upper side the, th the other side is lower side or that is ventral side this is dorsal side dorsi ventral differential and another important thing is the thallus is dichotomously branched now dichotomously branched means each time it will divide only into two not more than that suppose you see this is it divides like this it divides like this like this this is the structure it is always dichotomously branched here it is divided into two then here it is divided into like this. but in case of uh, some species of rishia it is so much dichotomously branched that it gives like a rosette appearance that means it completely circular this is known as rosette appearance this is usually found in some species of polisia otherwise in most of the cases in rishan markers this is their structure so here you will find the roots are there sorry rhizoids the rhizoids are there and the rhizoids are always unicellular the rhizoids are always unicellular multicellular rhizoids will get only in case of mosses here it is unicellular now on the lower side of the some of the thalli like particular marcasia will find two rows of leaves like this for retention of water two rows of leaf like structures two rows of leaf like because their leaves are absent leaf like structures present on the lower side this is known as amphigastria amphigastria so amphigastria means two rows of leaves on the lower surface of their the ventral surface of the thalli of some of the liver worts this is very important so the thallus is a dorsi ventral leaf flat having lower side and upper side or ventral and dorsal side the rhizoids are always unicellular and on the ventral side two rows of leaves are there that is amphi that is known as amphigastria this is only the uh, thallus structure because the main plant body is gametophytic and haploid now if we come to the reproduction part the reproduction may be vegetative or may be asexual and sexual 
Now, you will consider the vegetative reproduction. The vegetative reproduction usually takes place by means of fragmentation. So, this is uh, one th thallus, and uh, the apical part is the growing part. The apical part lies here, while, while the old part lies here. When it will grow old, gradually this old part there will be, in the old part there will be gradually death and decay. So when that death and decay reaches the point of dichotomy, now these two are separated. So this you can tell uh, fragmentation, or this is you can tell due to death and decay, now the thala is separated into two. This is one way it multiplies vegetatively. If you next we'll come to the asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction. Uh, in vegetative, I can tell you another thing also to you was when the conditions are uh, not favorable, that means the unfavorable condition, the tip of this uh, where the growing point lies, it is surrounded by some thick walls and this is known as tuber. Then when favorable condition will come, then again it will give rise to new plant. That is, these are the two vegetative. Now coming to the asexual reproduction, asexual reproduction usually takes place by means of uh, the formation of uh, Gamma. Gamma is singular. If you add E, then it becomes plural. Now, what are these gamma? Usually, the gamma are formed in the thallus of Marcansia. Now, let us draw one diagram. This is suppose one Marcansia. This is the, uh, the um, midrip. In this area, there are some, some cough like structures. Some cup like structures are present. These cups are known as gamma cups. Gamma cups. Now, within these gamma cups, they will develop. I am drawing it uh, separately. Suppose this is one gamma cup, it is, uh, it is embedded in the thallus. So, this is one gamma cup. Now, within this gamma cup, how the gamma will develop? The gamma will develop just like the, you see a small stalk is there and it is a biconvex structure. Likewise, so many gamma will develop here. So, these are known as, uh, these, these are known as uh, gamma. Now, each gamma, it's green, it's a multicellular, asexual body. Each gamma is a green, multicellular, asexual body and is biconvex type. It has both rhizoidal cells as well as the green cells containing chloroplast. Now, when these will be dispersed, when it will be dispersed, and it will fall on the soil, in moist soil, it will germinate and it will give rise two plants. It will, uh, add, this is the growing point, this is the growing point. So it will give rise to two different plants. In this way, with the help of a gamma, uh, the liver roots multiply themselves. Now coming to the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is oogamous and it takes place by formation of uh, male and female sex organs. That is the uh, anthridia and archegonia. The sexual reproduction is by production of uh, anthridia, which gives rise to antherozoids. Antherozoids and the antherozoids are short cut uh, by flagellate. While the archegonia, the archegonia is the female sex organ and it gives rise to a facet structure where the egg or the ooseper lies. Now, here one important thing is, the coming to the sexuality of this uh, Rishia and Marcansia, the Rishia is usually monoecious, while Marcansia is diocious. Rishia, this is very important, the Rishia is monoecious, Monoecious and Marcansia 
इज डायोसियस दैट इज बोथ दिस एंथेड एंड आर्किवल आर बोर्न ऑन द सेम थैलस इन केस ऑफ रिसिया बट इन केस ऑफ मार्कनसिया दे आर प्रेजेंट इन सेपरेट थैलाइ दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट इन केस ऑफ मार्कनसिया when they are born on the separate uh, thalai so the, uh, this is uh, one thala this is one thalus and uh, this is uh, another thalus now here since they are separate plants at from this Suppose this is the anthidia. The anthidia will grow. So it will give rise to anthidia. So this is known as anthidio four, anthidio four. And if it will give rise to structure, like this, where which will be our archegonia, then this is known as archegonio four. That means here antheridia and archegonia are born on separate plants, having antheridio four and archegonia four. The diagrams are important. Antheridio four, archegonia four is important. Marcus here the diocesis also is very very important. These, these things you have to remember. So the the antheridia they will give rise to bifurcated antheroids, and in the archegonia four at the top, the archegonia will be present like this. Then, with the help of water, the anther the antheros will swim, and uh, it will this here. Now, fertilization will take place. After fertilization, this becomes the zygote, and it gives rise to two-end structure. Now, suppose so this is the uh, this is the structure of this. This is the archegonia four, where the archegonia lies like this. and now they are all fertilized after fertilization is complete this middle portion of this uh, uh, archegonia four will rapidly grow while this sides will not grow rapidly as a result what will happen it will be like this like this and the archegonia the fertilized archegonia they will be in hanging condition like this Only after fertilization. Only after fertilization. Now the already fertilization has taken place. Now the zygote, uh, the zygote will give rise to the sporophyte. So naturally, the sporophyte in case of Marcansia is inverted condition, but not in Asia. In Asia, it is upright, and in Asia, it is embedded with the thallus. But here, it is inverted condition. This is one of the very important things in case of Marcansia. So <coughs> now the Gametophyte stage is complete, and from the zygote, the sporophyte will develop. So, when the sporophyte will develop, in case of Rhesia, sporophyte is embedded, is embedded in thallus. No, uh, no foot and sitter. Only capsule is there. Only capsule is there, and this uh, after meiosis, it will give rise to spores, which are haploid, and they will germinate to give rise to the gametophyte to plant body. But in case of Marcansia, they are uh, inverted position. So when they are inverted, suppose this is the thallus structure. It is inverted. Inverted means it will give rise to a structure like this. That means this is the foot, this is the sitter, and this is the capsule. Capsule inverted position. Now all these foot, sitter, and capsule they are diploid because they are the parts of the sporophyte. Within this capsule there will be meiosis, and haploid spores will be produced. Haploid spores will be produced, which is the starting point for the gametophyte generation. But here one important thing: when they Uh, when the cells of the capsule give rise uh, undergo meiosis and to give rise to spores, 
nearly 50% of the spore mother cells that do not undergo meiosis, they remain as diploid and simply they become elongated structures. They become elongated structures like this. These are known as elatus. Very, very important. Elatus. That means elatus are uh, diploid structures because the spore mother cells do not undergo meiosis. And they are long, coiled, and they exhibit the zero casi. That means in dry conditions, they, uh, they show zigzag movement, and that helps in a dispersal of the spores. So this point is very important, elatus. So the, in this way, the liverworts, whether Rissia or Mercantia, they give rise to the spores, and the spores again germinate, to give rise to the gametophytic plant body, that means the gametophyte gives rise to sporophyte, the sporophyte gives rise to gametophyte, and uh, that is the haplodiplonic life cycle that already we have discussed in the general characters. So, in this way, the life cycle is uh, uh, complete. Now, let us discuss uh, some questions. So one question, uh, find out the correct statement, a choice, both Isia and Marcansia are Monoceous. B choice. Both Ericea and Mercantia are dioecious. C choice. Ericea is dioecious and Mercantia is monoecious. D, D choice. Rissia is monoecious and uh, Marcansia is dioecious. So this is one uh, question. The second question. The green multicellular asexual structures found in liverworts liverworts are a choice uh, tumors b choice bulbils c choice gamma and uh, uh, d choice None of the above. These are the type of questions which are usually asked in all types of uh, national type of tests. You will be able to answer, the, answer these questions. Thank you very much for watching it. God bless you. Have a good day.